Let's talk about Joe Zett and Jocko, the Strashship H22 parts one and two uh, by Hergé, most famously the creator of uh, Tintin. He did create two other series, one being this, which is in album format, a similar adventure story, and uh, the other which is Quick and Flupka, a single page gag strip. Let's have a look at these, just get the covers out. So there are, <coughs> The equivalent of five albums of Joe Zett and Jocko in our terms, uh, there's these two and uh, Valley of the Cobras, all of which are the semi-available in English. And the other is uh, the two parts of the Secret Ray, I think it's called, or something like that. Uh, Manitoba No Reply, which um, is much harder to find. Functionally, it's unavailable in English. There is one copy on a books for £1,300. Uh, it's a Tintin in the Congo kind of problem where some aspects of it have uh, uh, attracted controversy with age and um, it struggled to get English translations. Uh, on the other hand, this this is a later printing than, than this. Uh, these are reprints, therefore, and I've got Valley of the Cobras 2 in hardback, which I'll do another time. Um, and uh, it's basically, it was that during the 30s, Hergé was asked if he wanted to do a strip in a, in a French Catholic magazine, kids magazine, much like the uh, Petit Ventiem. And he said yes. And the idea was that it'd be a, a much uh, simpler and family facing story than Tintin. So you get these two kids and maybe they're twins and their pet monkey Jocko and uh, they go on various adventures. Um, Hergé didn't really like it very much, at least in, in later life, he, he talks about, you know, the parents crying all the time as the kids go away and, uh, you know, go missing all the time. And he, uh, you, you get the sense um, from what you read of what he says is that this was, he wanted access to the French market and this was a way to do that. Um, and the cost was, was doing books that were perhaps less interesting than Tintin. Uh, these two go together. As I say, um, Valley of the Cobras is a standalone. The first two form a, a story called The Secret Ray. And these two are Straship H22. And uh, Mr. Pump's Legacy comes first, then Destination New York. The, the gimmick is that there is a... <laughs> well, very early on in Mr. Pump's Legacy. Let's see if we can't just uh, um, demonstrate this. Uh, Mr. Pump is an eccentric who uh, wants to go everywhere very quickly and um, this leads eventually <laughs> to a rather uh, terrible explosion as he comes off the road and his car blows up. And the idea is that if someone comes up with a ship, that a, a plane that can get from Paris to New York um, in four hours is it or something like that uh, at uh, therefore at an average of 1000 kilometers per hour, or some, uh, they will get a lot of money. Otherwise, his nephews will. And his nephews are, are very bothered about uh, the prospect of not getting the money immediately. Now, there we get Joe Zett and, jo Joe and Zett, and um, there's uh, Jocko there. And their father, Mr. Legrand, Monsieur Legrand, ends up designing the plane. And, and this is the basic story. Now, of course, and the things that are going to go on are sabotage attempts on the ship and various things. And uh, and of course, the kids are going to end up um, taking centre stage uh, in the adventure. And I think probably the, the first thing, essentially, the, call, call it the, the caveat emptor, or the, the warning line, is um, that Hergé always enjoys, um, and you, you'll, you'll see this if you read any amount of Tintin, he always enjoys a great deal of uh, coincidence and you know si silly rupture as to why things come about the way they do, um, and those habits I think are functionally, if if it's uh, if this is uh, reasonable to put it like this, they are worse here than they are elsewhere. Um, I think possibly because the characters uh, and and uh, yeah, Joe jo jo and Zeta do get it in correctly, get it in the neck from critics uh, as pretty bland characters. Uh, Jocko is a, a knockoff Snowy pretty clearly. You know, he ends up fighting with walruses and uh, getting into all kinds of scrapes and getting stuck on an iceberg and things like that. And there's generally, um, he's obviously meant to be the Snowy character uh, and the comic relief. Um, and it is less effectual uh, 
than snowy and i think in terms of the way it actually works in the plot you know you can just about get away with a thing like snowy and king Otakar's scepter turning up with the MacGuffin. um Whereas I think, yeah, Jocko mostly seems to cause trouble and uh, is a counterpoint to very, very dull straight men, whereas Tintin is a fantastic straight man. He is a uh, action-adventure hero. And him and the captain have the same relationship later in the series. Uh, yeah, I mean, here's a, a good example of, uh, of Jocko uh, ruining something, getting caught up in a early test balloon. Um... Yeah, you can see here he is getting caught up in a test balloon and uh, flies around and lots of things happen and they're chasing him around and uh, there's a decent gag about a, 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 a weather vane cockerel being blown in uh, to a man who's expecting to eat coco van. Um, so, you know, you get the idea. That's the kind of humour we're talking about. And Joe and Zeta, I mean, yes, uh, I'm not sure what if anything Zeta contributes in this story um, really uh, Joe um, can pilot planes apparently given they're kind of 10 or 11 you feel like these really need to be you know maybe a uh, um, a 15 and a 12 year old or something or a 17 and a 13 year old some some slightly better uh, spread of ages and um, now the genre to fit them into uh, and, and Tintin is adjacent to this but I mean uh, I think in a slight, slightly different style maybe slightly older inverted commas is uh, these are in British terms famous five kind of stories you know they uh, there's uh, villains um, who are constantly on the edges of things the kids get themselves into all kinds of scrapes to try to stop them and um, uh, yeah and that's particularly true in this first one that that has this Famous Five feel as uh, there's all these conspiracies to ruin everything. Um, but uh, I, in the second, it turns into a slightly different kind of story where, and there's a sense here of a structural integrity issue, perhaps, which is that they end up just in the Arctic because that's where the plane has crashed after they've flown it somewhere. And uh, they have to go through various escapades to get away and to sort stuff out. Uh, the reversals of fortune are even quicker than in Tintin. You know, oh, well, we fixed something. I oh, know it's gone wrong. Can even happen within a page. Uh, generally speaking, uh, Valley of the Cobras, which is the final Joe and Jocko no, uh, album. There was some talk, I think, in the 60s of repurposing the Tintin Therma Zero idea. I think possibly it might have been Bob DeMore to lead. Um, it was certainly one of the assistants was going to lead. Uh, and that, you know, so it, it, it's a shame that that didn't come to fruition, but uh, uh, Valley of the Cobras, I think, hangs together a bit better here uh, in this two-parter. Um, it's at the highest end of Hergé, forcing action, forcing progression, things just happening. He wants to go to a different place. We do get a story, you know, it's, it's, it's nice in a way that we get it because it matches his, it, well, expands his travel portfolio. We get some stuff in the... Um, Arctic, we get Inwits uh, in a very uh, good appearance actually, very uh, thoughtful, there we go, there's some uh, Eskimos or Inwits um, and there is uh, Jocko being annoying, um, but yeah the, the Inwits are, oh we've got a sled team there, uh, currently also reading uh, Kui Kuen with, uh, from the second Jungle Book with, with my children which uh, kind of was nice to kind of think about the, uh, the dog teams actually uh, while reading this you know th there's some decent travel stuff there and they this is canon to Tintin actually um, they are in the same world uh, so hey that's nice but it's otherwise n nothing much to it at the kind of um, the plot and uh, humor levels and um, Valley of the Cobras is an improvement what you do get is basically top-notch uh, design um, and uh, art uh, this is not, I think, redrawn. I think um, it's from the mid to late 30s. I think it was always in colour. If it wasn't always in colour, it was probably uh, recoloured or coloured for the Castamon publication in the early 50s. But essentially, it hasn't had significant redrawing. It hasn't had significant colouring as far as I know. You're just looking at, generally speaking, very good uh, Hergé designs of that time period. Uh, oh, you also have some uh, some uh, some Roma. Um, who uh, there's a there's a broad it's interesting you've hit a point um, you know and it's relevant to think about Blue Lotus in this context and the changes to Hergé's approach to the the rest of the world is you've hit a point where basically 
uh, within certain limits, people are just being presented positively. You know, they meet all kinds of people and those people are presented as different, yes, but interesting and, and potentially friendly. But yeah, you just get a lot of, you know, a pretty good Lean Claire, uh, his design of the time. You get some decent drawings of planes, uh, certainly the planes are, f are fun. Um, mostly you see the Strash of H22, uh, but there are some others. Uh, there's lots of, there's some vans. Uh, there's the prison service number 12 van. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, good, good, some good action. Um, the character designs are not all fascinating. A lot of the adult men look weirdly identical in a way I don't think I've ever picked up massively in, in, in Hergé. Uh, but um, the world design is very good and the art is very enjoyable. And there are occasionally just some quite well communicated uh, spots in terms of, you think about this being written in the 30s, compare it to American comics of the 30s. And though there are a couple of, we'll call them the uh, Edgar Jacobs passages, um, you get a lot of uh, art first stuff where, you know, the sequential art is actually pictures as well as words, uh, an assumption that you can communicate with uh, with pictures um, and it's, it's it, that's not wholly consistent um, by the way the I, I do have the the editions which have the excellent uh, kind of call them Moulin Sart backgrounds with uh, you've got uh, Quick and Flutka there Josette and Jocko there Thompson and Thompson uh, over there Calculus and Haddock and uh, Tintin um, but yeah I think in a general sense I that's one thing about the Jocko sections, is though they are not as good as a good snowy section, what I would say is they show a relative confidence, and, and the actual art and stuff is all very capable, of just communicating, and there he is fighting a walrus, of just communicating with pictures. And similarly, you get plenty of low on words, high on art stuff, like the dog team there, like the, the uh, ship hitting an iceberg. Um, there's some more Jocko being annoying stuff. Uh, on a ship where he coincidentally meets some of Jojo and Zet's friends, uh, fairly, uh, fairly forced. More good planes, a couple of good planes actually. Um, let's uh, yeah, get over here, a couple of nice planes. Uh, and that's a classic AJ thing, isn't it? Vehicle design, enjoying vehicle design. Um, is it anything remarkable or special? Is it worth getting out of bed in the morning for, as it were? Um, no, not really. I think what it is, and Valley of the Cobras, as I say, is, is uh, maybe a bit more interesting and I'll talk about it another time. Um, but what you do see here is maybe when put into an environment or, or with topics he wasn't as interested in, I know that, you know, you, to the point of him saying Tintin was lucky to be an orphan because of how much he uh, felt the uh, dynamic here was frustrating. And um, I think that in the end, let's be clear that's because he didn't want to write it and so the parental ch child relationships don't work um, not because it's impossible to do that uh, but I think you look at it and you can tell so he's he's having fun uh, designing stuff he's f having fun coming up with ideas he's having fun adding environments uh, and he does um, so in in all of the you know they're very much exploration adventure stories like uh, you know main section main run Tintin um, but uh, you know and, and and the action quotient is certainly very high <laughs> it's entertaining um, but I think uh, you can tell it's a project his heart is not in uh, so you're looking at it I think mostly as a curiosity of the kinds of stuff that Hergé uh, could do um, you know the, the kinds of range he might have the kinds of interests he might have uh, in, in his, the beginning of his peak, rather than really as um, one of his core products. Anyway, I mean, if you've read any Josette and Jocko, please do tell me what you think in the comments, um, and I will see you next time.